losses under process costing. In many processes, it is highly unusual for a business to achieve 100% output from the inputs committed. So if 100 units of a product are expected from a process based on the input, the process is likely to generate 90 in actual product. So the difference between the input that was made and the output that is finally produced is the loss. So the loss can be as a result of evaporation, spillage, damage, water view. Let's talk about normal loss. Now, also known as expected loss. This is the loss a business expects to incur from the process. In other words, it is the level of shortage acceptable to the business. Now, this expectation can be set based on experience or industry metrics. Now, a business has little or nothing to do with controlling this type of loss in terms of either eradicating or alleviating it. So, the total process cost is to be apportioned over the number of actual output units produced. So here, we assume that there is nothing to be gained from the loss that has been incurred. Let's quickly test our understanding. So the following costs were incurred in the production process of writing pens for the month of May 2015. So materials were $90,000, labor $100,000, variable overheads $50,000, fixed overheads $30,000. So a normal loss of 10% is expected. Actual units were $90,000. So we are supposed to calculate the cost per unit and the process account. So if the actual produce was 90,000 units and then 10% was expected, that means that we are supposed to gross up this 90,000 by the 10% to arrive at the original expected output based on the input that was made. So when we come to the solution, we'll start with estimating the total cost of production to arrive at the cost per unit, then we move further. So we start with materials, the unit is 100,000. So when we gross the 90,000 units up, the cost was 90,000 for material. Labor was $100,000. Variable overheads was 50,000. Fixed overheads was 30,000. So now we are just moving on with the absorption type of costing. When the question demands for marginal, you omit the fixed overheads. Then the normal loss is 10%. So you see the 100,000 grows up. We took the 10% out, which gave the 10,000, then it led to the 90,000. It came at no scrap value. You can't sell to make any monetary gains out of it. So it is dashed on the amount column. Then total cost on the unit side will be the 90,000 actual output. So the total cost will be $270,000. So the cost per unit now will be the $270,000 being allocated or apportioned over the 90,000 units. When we come to the process account, the debit will put the materials, 100,000 units, originally intended as the outcome, $90,000. Labor being $100,000. Variable overheads, $50,000. Fixed overhead, $30,000. Leading to a total input unit of 100,000 and the cost of $270,000. When we come to the credit, we'll start with the normal loss. The unit was 10,000. It came with no value. It means that we lost it completely. Then the transfer, that is the final output, was 90,000 units at a cost of $270,000. Closing the account, we are going to get 100,000 units and $270,000. Let's look at a situation where the normal loss has a scrap value or can be sold. There are circumstances where monetary gain can be derived but beneath the market value of a regular output. So if a regular product is selling for let's say $5, the loss product is going to be sold for $4. The accounting process will be that the scrap proceeds or the sellable amount is to be deducted from the total cost of the process before being apportioned to the actual output. Let's test our understanding to make this clearer. The following costs were incurred in the production process of writing pens for the month of May 2015. Materials was $90,000, labor $100,000, variable overheads $50,000, fixed overheads $30,000. Now a normal loss of 10% is expected. 
they have a scrap value of one dollar each actual unit produced were ninety thousand dollars it means that we gross it up we'll get hundred thousand original intended units so we have to calculate the cost per unit process account and loss account so with the solution again we start with estimating the total cost and then the cost per unit so material hundred thousand units ninety thousand dollars labor hundred thousand dollars variable overheads fifty thousand dollars fixed overheads thirty thousand dollars down the normal loss will be ten thousand units being less from the total or original unit at a scrap value of ten thousand dollars that is a scrap of one dollar times the units of ten thousand also being less as explained in the costing process this will lead to a total of ninety thousand units and two hundred and sixty thousand dollars now the cost per unit in this instance will be 2.89 dollars so when we move to the process account we will still bring the input to the debit side material of hundred thousand units ninety thousand dollars labor of hundred thousand dollars variable overheads of fifty thousand dollars fixed overheads of thirty thousand dollars then we close it hundred thousand units at a cost of two hundred seventy thousand dollars when we come to the credit side normal loss 10,000 units it has a saleable value now of $10,000 we now come to the transfer value that is the finished goods 90,000 was actual output at a cost of $260,000 2.89 cost per unit multiplied by the output of 90,000 leading to 100,000 units for the transfer at a cost of $270,000 so when we come to the loss account we will now bring the normal loss to the debit side 10,000 units at $10,000 a loss like an expense has a debit balance then we close it it came with the cash so we credit it 10,000 units going for $10,000 so we close the account